Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some and peace out to the rest of you. <clears throat> you know who it ain't and who it is. It ain't your boy. It is your man. Black is hard, black is minded, blackest man on social media, signing black in and shining again. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger and always has been. Um, regarding the video in which uh, they whooped that Arab man's behind, um, I want to clarify something, and that is that I do not call for what they would call reverse racism. What I call for is justice. However, you can't separate justice from what they will call reverse racism because understand that the communities, I don't mean every individual, but the non-black communities of Muslims uh, weren't supposed to be separate communities anyway, ideally speaking, but they always have been. And to a certain extent, we've been separate because of not only history, but we've also been separate for another reason. And that is that we have been separate um, because that's just how they react to higher doses of melanin, even within their own, even amongst their own people, not with hatred, but just with distance. So any charges of tribalism apply to them and they don't apply to us. We've been uh, we, we as Christians, as Muslims and as ancestor worshipers and anything else, we have always been the ones with the open arms and we've been the ones that got shunned. The reason my open arms have been accepted in many cases is not so much consciously due to this, but subconsciously due to the melanin I don't have. The 4C here I don't have. I've utilized it, I've made friends, and I've been able to put certain ideas in their heads that they needed. But a lot of times this is not necessarily taken as well from somebody else with more melanin than I have. And this is dealing with people who don't necessarily hate us and want to wipe us out per se. They just can't remember our equality. Now that I've got that out the way, let me move on to this. Uh, main message right here, which is about um, black republicanism. With no shade, I'm sorry, Obsidian, I cannot support calling black men to the Republican Party. I can support calling black men away from the Democrats. I can and I do. But I cannot support calling black men to the Republican Party. And this is not just something you may need to hear, but this is something a lot of us in the manosphere may need to hear because a lot of us think that because we are conservative that we can be these black Republicans. That's not the way this works. I've been saying to us for the longest and I've been telling us for a while now, I don't know why this is so difficult for many of us to understand. What has happened here is not that the Republicans have gotten better per se, it is that the Democrats have simply uh, been discovered as being worse than what we thought. That's all. Now, I've been asking, what specifically did Trump do for black people? And the answer that I've gotten has been that he funded HBCUs. I hear that he's done so much, but then I hear that he, what he's done is he's funded HBCUs. I also hear that uh, black male incarceration is down. What I believe is the case is that certain things happen without necessarily the president, uh, uh, president's input. The presidents can choose to not do things to stop certain trends. But many in efforts and initiatives do take a long time. It's just like planting a tree. You plant the tree. But if you don't plant it when you're young, you're not going to live, you're not going to sit in the shade when you're older. So by the time you're old enough to understand the importance of planting a tree, you are already too old to survive long enough to sit in its shade. You know you are only planting it for somebody else. Much like many farmers, they plant uh, things like date trees, as an example, and it takes them decades to mature and begin to produce dates. So they know that they're planting date trees for which they will never eat the dates, but somebody else will. I think Obama did good and bad. He didn't do enough. And I do not support uh, any black person that did not pardon Asada Shakur, as an example, or pardon the Angola Three. Any black president, at least, that doesn't do that. Obama dropped a bunch of bombs on Muslim countries. So I'm not even calling for his support, per se. 
He can't be president anymore anyway. What I'm saying is that Obama um, may have done certain things that allowed uh, the incarceration rate to go down later on. It may have had nothing to do with him. I don't think it had much to do with Trump either. Now, Trump has said that he's willing to discuss reversing the crime bill that the Democrats put out. And I understand that, that Maxine Waters may have voted against it, against that particular bill. But we have to understand something. We are making a mistake thinking that the Blexit, uh, that Blexit or Blexit, as we call it, whatever the case is, means that we go to the Republican Party. We're making a mistake thinking that. Now, many white Republicans on the ground, just voters, may sit up here and believe that it's not about color, it's about culture, but they still don't understand how inferior and ucked up their culture is. We're still dealing with the same racist context uh, on the plantation of America. You think that the Democratic Party is a plantation, you keep forgetting America's the plantation. The right and left wings belong to the same bird. The Republicans are talking. It's election season. T today is the election day. As a matter of fact, where I am, as I'm recording this, it's already the day after the election. At the time that you, uh, at the time I'm recording this, you all are finishing your votes. The Western states still have yet um, to close their polls. As at, at the time that I'm recording this. But you... Um, don't have the results yet. However, for us, it's already tomorrow morning. I want y'all to factor that in. It is already tomorrow morning at the time I'm telling you this. I want you to let that marinate for a little bit. I am not used to not knowing the results this time of day on a Wednesday. I got to get used to that. But what I can tell you is that it has never really made a difference for us. Because remember, if the Republican Party was so good, why did Bush not reverse this stuff? He came after Clinton. He had eight years. Why did he not reverse any of this either? You see, the Democrats uh, may have pushed the crime bill, and they actually had a lot of support from the black communities at that time because black communities were sick of the crimes that were motivated by drugs. So many of us were in support of that. And the Democrats uh, went for that, and they were talking about super predators. And, uh, look, Trump has a valid point about that crime bill and how it was applied. But Trump was not against that either. He wasn't a politician at that time, but he was not against that either. We still fail to understand that it is among the Republican Party, among white conservatives, that the dumbest, the least qualified are the ones that win the highest office. You don't understand, black men. You can become red pill aware, conscious, all that stuff. You still must remember, we don't have a political party that is in our favor. America's always going to be that racist plantation that it's been. It's not going to change. So... And the other thing, too, if Trump funded HBCUs, he did exactly what other presidents do. The White House has an HBCU office. That's always been the case. What I want to know is, have they funded HBCUs uh, specifically and exclusively? And that's not happened. Neither party has ever said, here's what black people deserve that nobody else deserves. They've never done this. And they're certainly not going to sit up and say, here's what black men deserve that no one else deserves. And it ain't really because they love black women. It's just that they hate black men, like Dr. Francis Cress Wilson said. So when I hear these calls, I'm, I'm reiterating the same point. When I hear you keep on calling for black men to become Republicans, I don't get it. I understand why black men are sitting at home for this uh, presidential election. I do not understand why black men are turning out and saying, I'm going to vote for Trump. Trump is discussing being willing to take... Um, or to take down or to reverse this. But even then, this is legislation. Can Trump do this by himself? I'm not the expert. But I do know that both political parties uh, don't have our interest at heart. Both of them respond to black masculinity pretty much the same, or almost the same way. 
One says it's toxic and you need to do away with it. And the other one says, we're going to look, you know what? Um, you don't talk to us like that. We run this. That's really all it is. One is a kinder master who's willing to uphold the slavery system, and the other one is a more open and in-your-face master. And some of you say, I would much rather the wolf than the fox because he growls at you and bears his teeth. I get that. I understand that. The problem is that even still, the wolf is going to very stupidly be led to believe just about anything. Neither one of them is good for us. Neither one. Many of their problems, we get caught up in and we shouldn't even have to. We should not have to sit up here and debate about COVID-19 and should we be wearing masks or should we be fighting for our freedoms. This is not something we should be debating. You have a virus. You've got health care. We're going to get less of the health care to combat and recover from the virus. So we're going to die disproportionately. It's always been that way. So how about we stop taking on their arguments for us? I get it. Now, I hear that there's some kind of beef between Black Manosphere and BM1, BM First. I don't know what that beef's about. I don't fully understand it yet because I have to work in my real life. I don't have time to find it out. Somebody would have to summarize it for me. And if you know some other things that Trump did specifically for black people and exclusively for us, feel free to tell me because I just don't know. But the only answer I've gotten so far after weeks of asking has been he funded HBCUs. Well, that's something that the White House has done in general, period. Even Bush didn't put a stop to that. What I am going to say, though, is that we have every right to sit up and say to the gynocracy and the matriarchy, we're not voting in your interest anymore and against our own. That we have every right to say. We have every right to say to them, F Joe Biden, get him out of my face. And F Kamala Harris too, get him out of our faces. The problem though is this, many of us black Republican, I mean, not, not us, uh, but many of us black conservative men are saying that uh, the crime bill was a problem. It was used to, um, disproportionately target us, but then we turn around and we say that uh, Pookie and Ray Ray uh, deserve actually to be killed. And I would say, look, the ones that are violent, yeah, they do deserve that. Hell, even the ones that brag about sleeping with married women. Yes, they deserve that. Beheadings, decapitations in front of other people. Yes, absolutely. The ones going out molesting kids, yes, absolutely. Um, the ones not even joining gangs, but trying to recruit others into their gangs, yes, absolutely. But many of us are sitting up and saying, we're, we, we're sitting up and saying that Pookie and Ray Ray deserve exactly what it is that we're using as a major talking point to justify walking away from the Democratic Party. And it's understandable we would walk away from them. But we're sitting up here talking about personal accountability and you can make it if you just pull your... We're talking that same old white shit. If you just pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you can make it. And then we turn around and say we don't want to... Uh, uh, and then say that we want to vote Republican because the Democrats decided that they were going to um, legislate enhanced sentencing for people that were repeat offenders. See, the problem with the crime bill was that it, it, it enhanced sentencing for those that were nonviolent repeat offenders, committing crimes for economic, well, let's say for financial reasons, because they were broke, they didn't have any other way. And truth be told, even a lot of drug dealers didn't make a lot of money. They just didn't have to work a hell of a lot for the money they got. That was really what happened. Most of them didn't make much. They just didn't have to work so hard to be so damn poor. Whereas if you were going to go the honest route, you had to work so hard to be so damn poor. But we really don't have all our stuff together when it comes to American politics. We, we think we do. We talk like we do. We don't. We don't understand a lot of what it is. I don't understand all of it at times. 
How does a bill become a law? Basic things at times we tend to overlook. Now, I'm going to get on our detractors. I'm going to get on them. Some of them have come out and they try to play certain clips um, that uh, they try to discredit Donovan Sharp for things he said that are absolutely true. Like how Donovan Sharp uh, promotes a double standard. I don't like the double standard, but I understand why he must promote it. He has said himself, if you go, he's told the ladies, if you go and you sleep around, we lose respect for you because it's just it, it's too easy and you're devaluing yourself. But if a man does not sleep around, you lose respect for him because you demand that he do the things that are difficult. That's, he was right about that. He didn't make this up. That's what he's been able to observe. We all have been able to observe that. That the double standard they complain about men having is actually only the opposite of the double standard they have for men. Let's just call that what it is. So I'm going to go in, I'll go in on them. I'm not letting them off the hook. But when it comes to this politics, let's be honest. Let's just call it what it is. You're trading one slave master for another. And some of you got the nerve to say to Muslims that we're trading a white slave master for an Arab one, even though that's not true. <laughs> I'm telling you, you are talking about, simply put, which master out of the two. We're still not discuss something. Some of us are saying black male independence. I like that idea. That's good. But we're talking more about black male independence from Big Mama than we are black male independence from these political plantations. And that's where we made the error. We think that black male independence from Big Mama means we go to the Republican Party and support them. No, that's not going to help either. They're not going to value us. None of them will. They want the vote. They don't actually want to hand over anything. That's all it is. And when I think about it, that might be one of the only reasons that we have not been deported in mass. But look, with more and more Latin Americans being willing to vote Republican and us going in and, and us doing being willing to do the same thing, they may sit down and say, well, with enough of the Latin American vote, uh, do we need them, meaning us? I don't know. I mean. There's some reason that they haven't just decided to go and wipe us out yet. The military could do it easily within within a, a week. Oh, yeah. The U.S. has a capacity to wipe out our numbers within a week. Social Security numbers still have racial information tied to them and the codes. So um, what I would say, though, is that maybe that's the reason they haven't tried to do it yet. But neither one of them really wants us around, to be honest with you. And when I say us, I'm talking about heterosexual black men. Neither of them wants us around. They never have. I told you all I've been spying on these folks. I spied on white folks, I spied on Arabs. They don't. See, some of us act like the Arabs are the worst thing in the world when it comes to black folk. No, they're not. Not at all. But... The white Westerner does not want us around except maybe in a subservient position. The same positions we would not want to accept for ourselves are the only ones they want for us. So don't sit up here and think that you got anything that white folk done made politically that you can just turn to that as an answer. Nobody, no, there's no white institution or person that has the answers for us or that even agrees that they're the answers. Believe that. Conservatism is one thing, but remember, conservatism must be for our own reasons, not for theirs. And I don't think we got that memo yet. That being said, I think I've talked enough. Thanks for listening. Black heart, blackout, black mind, assalamu alaikum.